Hey there, my name is Crystal Everdeen, and today I'm going to show you how to crochet this scalloped crochet crop top. For this project, I'm using size 4 yarn from the brand Loops and Threads, and it is 100% acrylic. I am also using a size 5mm hook. So we're going to start off with creating the cups. The first step is to create a slip knot, and then chain a chain that is long enough to cover from the bottom of your breast to the middle or your nipples, so it needs to wrap around the bottom half of your breast. Now since I have smaller breasts, I only chain 10 chains, but if you have larger breasts, then you may need to chain more, so it's completely up to you based on your body. So, after you've chained your number of chains needed to cover the bottom half of your breast, then you go back on that chain with a single crochet. Now, if you are new to crochet and are unfamiliar with what a chain is, what a slip knot is, or what a single crochet is, then I suggest that you watch my crocheting for beginners video first and then come back to this tutorial. I will link my crocheting for beginners video in the description box below. So once you have created your first row of single crochet, your project should look something like this. So after you have completed this first row of single crochet and gone all the way to the end of the row, you're going to chain one, then flip the project over, go into that very first stitch for the next row. That is very important that you go into the very first stitch of every row when you do this because a lot of people have the issue of their cup curling at the bottom and that's because they either do not chain one or they don't go into the very first stitch at the end of the row so their cup begins to curve. So make sure you avoid that by simply chaining one, flipping the project over, and going into the very first stitch of the next row. And after you do that, you're going to go up the row and make another row of single crochet. However, once you reach the end here, we're actually going to change it up. Instead of working horizontally as you normally would a crochet project, we're actually going to flip it vertically and start working from here to here to here to here to here to make it more of a triangle shape as opposed to a rectangular shape that most crochet projects are. So from here, we're going to work on the point of the triangle. And in order to make this the point, you're going to find the middle stitch of this side right here. And you're going to create three single crochets inside of that same middle stitch. So just find where the middle is in that side right there. And then create three single crochets within that stitch. So the bottom part is going to be wide and then this point is going to be, well, a point. <laughs> so after you've created your three single crochets inside of that one stitch, then you're going to work your way down the opposite side and do a row of single crochet until you get to the bottom and once you reach the bottom of that side, you're going to again make sure that you go into the very last stitch to complete that row. And then in order to start the new row, you are again going to chain one, then flip the project over, and then continue with your single crochet back to the top right here, in which you will create three single crochets and then you're going to crochet your way down to the bottom here, chain one, flip the project over, work your way up, and once you reach this point right here, you're going to create three single crochets and then you're going to work your way down and so on and so forth. So now that I'm down here, I'm going to chain one, flip the project over, Make sure that I go into the very first stitch of the new row and once I do, I'm going to continue single crocheting throughout the rest of the row until I reach the top. And once I reach the top, I'm going to 
find that middle stitch and create three single crochets inside of that middle stitch. And there's always going to be a middle stitch because in the previous row you would have created three single crochets. So just find the middle of those three single crochets and keep the pattern going more and more until the project is large enough to wrap around or cover your entire breast. Now, again, my breasts are rather small, so my cup may look way smaller than yours, but keep going, keep making rows and rows until you finally put this against yourself and you like the coverage. So again, it's just going up and down and up and down and up and down until it's finally large enough for full coverage and after you're done you're going to cut the yarn from the yarn ball and do it all over again and make yet another cup the exact same size as the first. However, make sure that you do not detach the yarn from the yarn ball after you've completed your second cup because we're going to use that to attach the first cup to the second cup. And the way that I do it is I put my hook through the last loop of my second cup as well as the last loop of my first cup. I put the yarn that's still attached to the yarn ball as well as the excess yarn from my first cup over the hook and then I bring those two strands through the loop that is on my hook and boom, they are attached. So from here, you can cut the yarn from the yarn ball and then reattach it to the side of the project. However, I have a thing for trying my best to cut the yarn as minimal times as possible during the project. So instead of detaching the yarn and then reattaching it, I am going to slip stitch my way um, across the bottom of one of the cups until I reach the end. But again, if you don't want to do that, then you can just detach the yarn from the yarn ball and reattach it to the side right here. So from here, I slip stitched my way to the side and now I'm going to chain a chain that is long enough to wrap around the side of my body, essentially from here to here and since I am a size extra small to small, so I only chain 15 chains. However, you chain as many chains as you need in order for you to cover the side of your body. And once you have chained as many chains as you need, then you go back on that chain with a single crochet. And once you've gone all along that chain with your single crochet, and you're back at the side of the cup, that's when we're going to start making scallops as well as the straps every time we reach the point of either of the cups. Okay, so from the side here, I'm going to start making the scallops and I'm going to skip that first stitch, go into that second stitch and create double crochets. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what a double crochet is, it is yarn over through the stitch, yarn over back through the stitch, yarn over through two loops, yarn over through the last two loops. And again, I do cover that in detail in my crochet for beginners video if you are new to crochet. Now you're going to create a total of seven double crochets inside of that same exact stitch. And once you've created your seven double crochets inside of that same stitch, then it should look something like this. And this is what I call a scallop. I'm not sure if it's officially called that, but that's what I call it. So from here, you're actually going to skip two stitches and then go into that third stitch from the scallop and you're going to slip stitch into it and after you've slip stitched into that third stitch, you're actually going to skip yet another stitch and go into the following stitch and create another scallop the exact same way, simply by crocheting seven 
double crochets inside of the same stitch and you're going to repeat the process until you reach the top of the cup. Now I ended off in a weird situation where there wasn't enough room for me to make a full scallop before I reach the point of the cup. So I kind of made a partial scallop by simply making two double crochets inside of that one stitch instead of a full seven. And then I went into the middle stitch and created a chain of 150 chains. And the reason I made this trap so long is because it's not only going to serve as the neck strap, but also the back strap. So there needs to be a lot to work with. And after I've created my 150 chains, I went back on that chain with a slip stitch and that makes the chain a little bit thicker and more sturdy. Plus, again, I don't like detaching the yarn from the yarn ball and then reattaching it, so this is a really good way for me to avoid that. And again, it does make the strap more comfortable with this extra layer of slip stitch on top of it and more sturdy as well, so you don't have to worry about it snapping and breaking. So after you have gone all the way down the chain and you're back at the cup, I slip stitch into the first stitch and then made the other half of that scallop, kind of. I just made two more double crochets to kind of complete that scallop. It looks a little bit better than me just skipping those stitches and leaving it empty. So from here, I'm going to skip a stitch, slip stitch into the following stitch, then skip yet another stitch and create a scallop, again comprised of seven double crochets. And I'm going to repeat the same pattern that I did on the first side, all the way down to the second side and across to the second cup. So once I have crossed over to the second cup, I'm doing the exact same thing as I did on the first by creating scallops all along the side until I reach the point and then I make a strap and then create scallops all the way down the opposite side of the cup until I reach the end. And that's really it. So just continue making scallops with that pattern and then make your strap of 150 chains or more. Again, it's totally up to you and based on your size and preference. So now we are at the side of the project and we're going to make it even with the opposite side. So chain the same number of chains as you did the other side. For me, it was 15 chains, so I chained 15 on this side as well. So after I was done chaining that chain and hitting my camera and making everything all shaky, I went back on that chain with a single crochet. And after I was done going along that chain with my row of single crochet, I was left at the side of the project again. And from here, I'm just going to continue with my single crochet all along the bottom of the project to the other side for a full row of single crochet followed by a bunch of rows of single crochet. So from here, essentially, I am trying to find the nearest stitch I could put my hook into and create a single crochet from. There's not going to be a clear row of stitches that you can um, build this row on top of, so you kind of just have to jam your hook into the nearest stitch you could find and then make that row of single crochet, then everything will look nice and neat. It should look something like this. And again, you're just going to continue with this pattern until the project is wide enough to cover your torso, and then the very last step is to create the last row of scallops. So once you reach the end of your row of single crochet, you're going to chain one, flip the project over, go into the first stitch of the new row, and then continue creating single crochets until you reach the opposite side, in which you do the exact same thing once you reach the very end, and you're just going to continue creating more and more rows of single crochet until 
You put the project against your body and you're happy with the coverage. Now mine is a crop top, so that's why it looks so small and I didn't have to make as many rows of single crochet, but if you would like to make this a full top, then you can just keep going and make this portion longer. Again, based on your size and preference, you can just put the project against your body and see if you're happy with the coverage. And once you are happy with the coverage, then you can stop making these rows and rows of single crochet and move on to the last step, which is to make the final row of scallops. And to make the scallops, we're going to do the exact same thing we did when we were making the scallops on the cups. So from the side, I'm going to slip stitch into the first stitch, then skip a stitch and create my first scallop into that following stitch. Again, comprised of double crochets. However, for some reason, I wanted these scallops to be just a tad bigger than the ones on the cups. So instead of making seven double crochets to um, comprise my scallop, I'm actually going to be making eight double crochets per scallop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I don't know why. Um, I just wanted these to be ever so slightly bigger than the ones on the cup, but you don't have to. And from here, I'm going to skip two stitches, slip stitch into that third stitch, then skip a stitch, and then go into the following stitch and make a scallop. And I'm going to continue with that pattern all along the bottom of the top here. And after I have created all of the scallops throughout the bottom of the project, then I am done with the crocheting portion of the project. And the project should look something like this. So from here, since you're again done with the crocheting part of the project, you can detach the yarn from the yarn ball and then bring the excess yarn through the last loop and give it a tug. That way you can seal the project and it won't unravel. However, if uh, you are new to my channel, I actually don't cut the yarn from the yarn ball and end the project. I'm actually going to unravel this project after I'm done filming and then reuse the yarn for my next tutorial. And I know you may be thinking, why would you put so much time and effort into making this project, especially if it came out looking good, and then just unravel it? Well, again, it's because I need to reuse the yarn for my next project. I can't just be making projects and projects and projects, having them pile up in my closet, and then having to buy more yarn, that's, that's not good. So anyway, the very last step in general is to lace up the straps. So grab one strap from one side, bring it over to the opposite side, and attach it to the top portion of the bottom of the top. And I know that sounds weird, but attach it to the top here and then bring it across to the opposite side and attach it to the middle portion of the top and then bring it across the opposite side one last time and attach it to the bottom portion of the bottom portion of the top. <laughs> and then you're going to grab the opposite strap and bring it over to the opposite side, attach it to the top portion, then bring it over and attach it to the middle portion, and then bring it over one last time and attach it to the bottom portion. And the project should look something like this, minus that extra string that's still attached to the yarn ball because you're going to detach yours. And there you go, you've completed your scalloped crochet top. Now all that's left to do is style it and rock it. You can wear this to the beach or a concert or anywhere you want really. It's your decision and I hope you enjoy it. I also hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it interesting, entertaining, or helpful, mainly helpful. I try to make all my tutorials as easy to follow as possible, and if you are new to my channel, please check out the other crochet tutorials that I have available to you. They range from beginner friendly 
to a little bit more experienced. And what I mean by a little bit more experienced is you need to get a couple of my tutorials under your belt and then you understand how my tutorials work and you can keep up with my sometimes fast paced tutorials. But um, again, I have a wide range of beginner friendly ones. So you can start off with those first and then branch off to my more complicated designs. Thank you so very much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and also click that red subscribe button if you have not already so I can see you next time. Bye!